So I've been having some performance issues with my media PC. It's got a GeForce GTX 660 Ti, um, some Core i5 or something like that in it. And basically what happens is I launch a game and it runs great for a little while and then the frame rate starts to tank. Now, if you're familiar with thermal throttling, you probably know what I'm about to show you here. But if you're not, then we'll go ahead and show you what's going on. So you can see here, GPU temperatures are pinned at about 100 and 101 degrees. And then if we go ahead and scroll down, you can see our fan speed is pinned at 80%, which is the maximum that it'll do. And then finally, yes, this, my friends, this is the core clock. It should be at around one gigahertz plus, and instead, it's hovering between 581 megahertz and even dipping as low as 191. So this system is thermal throttling, and there's something that we need to do about it. The Flash Voyager GTX USB 3 drive from Corsair provides SSD-like performance and fits comfortably in your pocket. Click now to learn more. So this is the problem. Even with the graphics card doing nothing, sitting and idling, it's at about 50 degrees. So modern GPUs don't run much hotter than the ambient temperature, which means with this cabinet closed, it is roasting in there even when the computer's not doing anything. So I guess one solution would be to just have it open all the time, but uh, that's pretty lame. And another solution that I was doing, which is terrible, was just hanging the computer out here, but you can see I actually damaged the lip here quite a bit doing that. So obviously we need something better. So while I could have concluded that the solution is to put a less powerful computer in there, yeah, no, we're gonna add cooling to the cabinet instead. So I've gathered a drill, soldering iron, wire stripper, saw, dremel tool, measuring tape, cooling fans, fan grills, fan power splitter, inline resistors, external power supply for the fans, or perhaps some sacrificial stuff to do like a DIY something or other, a hole saw, some miscellaneous nuts and bolts, clear and electrical tape, a paper template, or four for cutting 120 millimeter fan holes, and then a vacuum for cleaning up. It's gonna be a fun day. Okay, so with the system out, I'd actually kind of forgotten the configuration of this case. I thought there was a, a vent on the bottom, but there isn't other than this intake right here. So that changes how I had planned to put the fans in. But what I wanna do is I want to get the exhaust from the case. So that's the top 120 millimeter fan here, and then the power supply fan at the back. I wanna get that out of the cabinet, and then I wanna bring fresh air to the intake, which for this case, the only real intake is here on the bottom. So what I may end up doing is changing the graphics card from a, uh, an internal recirculating cooler design to uh, like an open cooler design to one that has a rear exhaust on it. So we'll have to figure that out later. Let's see if this works first. So my original plan was to do one 120 millimeter intake down here and then I was gonna do like a side intake over here to account for the two exhausts that I'm gonna do at the top back here but um, my wife actually brought up that if I do decide to put a hole in the bottom of the case for some passive intake for the uh, the fan on the graphics card, then if I just put these both here covering the entire bottom of the case, I'll always have a computer here in all likelihood, so uh, I should just put them both here. All right, so here we are. All the templates are taped into place. So I will start by drilling out the four holes and then hole sawing the middles. All right, moment of truth time. Although we did have a realization, this is a lot thicker than the back material, so I'm gonna need some different bolts, but whatever. Okay, let's check and make sure that these are even the right size. And that's pretty tight. I would have to actually screw them through. Yeah, I'd rather have it a little looser, okay. Okay, so we've got all the holes drilled, except the big ones. And I had kind of a scary moment here when I realized my drill just barely, barely fits. So we want to get this lined up as perfectly as we can. My hole saw is not actually 120 millimeters. It's a little bit smaller. So I guess if I'm off by a little bit, it's not a huge deal because we're not making the best use of the space anyway, but here we go. Well, I got started and realized I wasn't wearing safety goggles and the way this spins, it was basically throwing sawdust right in my face. So here we go. So, uh, there we go. Piece number one that I accidentally drew on it while I was pulling it up is done. It's 
find out if a fan fits, shall we? So they're gonna kind of sit like there-ish. Although probably on the bottom of the cabinet, and then I'll have to I'll have to filter them with uh, maybe like some Silverstone filters or something like that. Um, so there you go. They'll be intakes though. But the point is just, do they fit? And the answer is yes, they do. So these fans have little wire management clips here. And I realized either I can wire manage them under here, which is just going to be kind of a pain in the butt, or I can just have just this one clip hold them down and I can put them in place this way. So I'll bring them up here, manage them together over here, and then route them to the fan splitter. So, well, this is the moment of truth where we find out if uh, they actually fit. So far it's going really well. There we go. All right. So that's how they'll go on. The helper. Okay, so my project has a uh, helper the now. The helper. Yeah, you're a really good helper, which of course means that I'm making really, you know, great progress at this point. Um, anyway, all the fans are on, so I don't know if you have an angle to see the ones at the back. There we go. So all the fans are on, and now I've added the SwiftTac fan hub. So this has a Molex power in as well as a PWM control lead that I'm actually not going to be using. I'm just going to use this for power because I'm going to run all these fans at full speed. They're only 1200 RPM fans, so they're, they're quite quiet. So I'm just going to use the included adhesive mount here to mount this in the back corner. And other than that, the cabinet itself, I think... Uh, for fear of getting ahead of myself, is pretty much there. Uh, mostly I didn't use grills, but at the back, for these fans, I'm using grills just because with all the wires hanging around here, I don't want anything getting caught in them. Another thing that I'm going to have to add later is um, some kind of a filter for these bottom ones. Oh, excuse me. Just because without a filter, those are going to be drawing air directly off the floor. So I've got a couple options for what I can use. I ripped this off a Silverstone case, uh, ripped this off of a Corsair case, but I'll, I'll have to figure out a, a system for mounting it so I can easily get at it later. Oh yeah, uh, fan control. In case I decide the fans are too loud, I might use these inline resistors. So as with any project like this, um, you know, wife roadblocks can be a bit of an issue. And I got the approval for the time and money to spend on this little project. And then it started taking a lot longer than originally advertised. So I'm simplifying it a little bit. Totally my choice. This is the way I wanted to do it, not the way that I'm about to tell you. So what I really wanted to do <clears throat> was I wanted to cut this up here, okay? And then just have this power lead lead to uh, a power connector on the back of the case. So I was just gonna find somewhere and dremel out a rectangular hole and then use these screws to secure it there. Then what I was gonna do was I was going to create a custom adapter. So I was gonna plug this in here and then I was gonna splice this one on here so that I could get a, uh, so that I could have the correct lead to plug into my fan controller. So we're scrapping that and instead we're gonna do it what my wife thinks is the more, is the less ghetto way, but I personally think is way more ghetto. And we're just gonna run a four pin Molex connector out this spot right here at the back where, just like this, where normally uh, this piece closes down on top of the, uh, the PCI bracket. So we're just gonna kind of close it in like that and we're just gonna have a lead like that. So I'd love to hear your feedback. Was my way cutting holes in the case the more ghetto way or is my wife's way repurposing this hole and then just having a power supply cable hanging out here like it's so ugly? Not that I'm leading you in the direction of which way I think you should vote, but there you go. Well, if nothing else, we've got power out the back of the case now, so we're pretty much ready to rock. All right, so uh, this is, I guess, an, a good opportunity to show you guys the internals of this case. So there's a 140 millimeter fan in the front that takes in from that filtered intake. This down here is what I'm gonna have to cut up in order to get more airflow to this graphics card if it comes to that. And then um, other than that, yeah, I guess we've got this routed over to the side of the CPU socket here, so it's gonna be pretty much out of the way. Just gonna, this is my power supply with the custom shortened cables um, for Mini ITX that I had in my old media PC. So I changed my mind about how I'm gonna mount the fan controller. Um, I decided to screw it in just because it has spots for that. So as long as these are small enough, uh, 
Yeah, it's not that ideal, is it? As long as they don't split then, as I go through them. Can they make it? Daddy, daddy. Yeah, my funny. My funny. <laughs> there you go. I got an endorsement from my two-year-old. I'm funny. I'm funny. To two-year-olds. Two so everything's wired back up now. Overall, I'd say the project was. Uh, well, I mean, I haven't seen temperatures yet, but uh, it went really well. Went really quickly. Uh, although there was one sacrifice that had to be made the receiver dongle for my uh, my air mouse slash keyboard thing that I actually find very, very useful. Um, got rolled over when I was showcasing the PC in the first place, so that's a real shame, but I guess now is the moment of truth. Okay, so we've got it put back in there. Um, I'd say it's not quite as quiet as I'd like, and what I'll probably do as a, as a V2 of this, of this little mod is get two four pin fan extensions and then change out the fans for PWM fans. And then I'll go from the, uh, from the Swiftech PWM splitter to the CPU header, and then I'll go from my CPU cooler out to the PWM splitter. So I'll use those two extensions there, and then I'll be able to have my CPU fan and then all four of the cabinet fans running according to CPU temp with the motherboard BIOS. So that'll be version two, but for now it's, it's definitely tolerable, but let's see what the results are like. So at idle, we're looking at 41 degrees, which is a 10 degree improvement. And uh, that is of course not the real test. So let's get Tomb Raider going on and let's, uh, let's let her cook for a bit, shall we? Okay, so I've had the same scene running for about half an hour. It's time to alt tab out and see how we did. GPU temperature 94, 95 degrees. Okay, so that's still pretty toasty, but core clock. Ah, we're even getting some turbo boost. So yes, it's still warm. Um, I think to, to take it to the next level, I would have to do something about the bottom of that system or install some kind of a blower type GPU so that I'm not recirculating the hot air within the system itself. But what we've done is we've lowered the cabinet temperatures enough that the card is at least able to keep itself under control. So there you go, mission accomplished. Uh, guys, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment, let me know. Do you want to see any more of this kind of vloggy, here's what I do on my weekends, sort of, because I probably wouldn't do this on my weekend if this wasn't my job, but I did it because I, it was my job and I kind of wanted to do it. So anyway, if you want to see more videos like this, then leave a comment, uh, check out the video description where we have our support us link. You can buy a cool t-shirt, not like this, like the ones that I normally wear in my videos. Uh, give us a monthly contribution or just change your Amazon bookmarks to one with our affiliate code. It helps us out a ton. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.